The following is a non-profit review. All opinions expressed in this review are those of the characters and may not accurately represent those of the people who created the characters and may not be the same as yours. You are free to have your own opinion, but do not expect your opinion to be respected if you disagree with that. Leave us alone and we'll leave you alone. But do feel free to express your different opinions in a common, respectful manner. Oh, who am I kidding? This is the internet. SD Gundam Forces property of Bandai Co. Ltd., Namco Bandai Holdings, UGA, TV Tokyo, and Sunrise Productions. Please report the show's official release. Look, I may be a little bit late on paying my respects to Jew Wario, but I don't even really know the guy. He sounded like a great man, and he's already been missed as far as I can tell. Generally speaking, the, this hasn't really been a good year for fans of good entertainment in general. Jackie Dan, Danny Wells, and even Campbell Lane, who voiced Rampage on Beast Wars, the narrator of Gundam Wing dub, and uh, more recently, Baron Strucker and the uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or something related to it have all passed away recently, and the year is just barely getting started. I do agree with Linkara that what we need right now is just a little bit of levity. I'm nowhere near as good as a comedian as he is, but I will do my best to help you laugh in these dark times, not just for your sake, but for theirs as well. I dedicate this review to all those great people who have passed, as well as to any of my viewers, loved ones, friends, or family. Zako, Zako, Zako! It's the Zako Zako Hour! Ladies and gentle bots, welcome to the Zako Zako Hour! Today's meeting is about... Sorry guys, I'm trying to do a review here. Can you host your little segment somewhere else? But well, we always hosted it here, Zako. Tell you guys what, I'll give you guys a lifetime supply of Captain Gundam training dummies if you let me have your stage. I don't know, Zako. I was hoping I wouldn't have to do this, but uh... Mask! Change! Captain Gundam! Me! Eh, it's the Gundam! Let's get out of here, Zako! Mask, change! Gokai, two! Well, that was easier than I expected. Anyway, time for the intro. Hello everyone, and welcome to Matu's Anime Reviews. This is the first of my new Splintered Out review shows. As always, I'm Matt too. And I'm Blaze Raptor, just some random crazy person piloting the Type J9 Griffin from Pat Labor. There is no doubt in my mind that Superior Defender Gundam Force is one of the most underrated animes of all time. It was co-created in America for an American audience, much like the Transformers Generation 1 or the Ruby Spears Mega Man cartoon, but it's still technically an anime and this case like Transformers was. And much like uh, Transformers, a uh, couple Transformers cartoons actually, it got cut short in America. The second season never getting aired apparently to a quote unquote disappointing ratings. Even though it apparently did well for a Cartoon Network Gundam anime. Ratings were apparently also low in Japan. But the second season did get a DVD release in America, just making this all the more questionable because it was by a petition. I've heard of an acquaintance of mine, the one who's been rigging and redistributing all the SD Gundam models, Blaze Raptor here, that people who would otherwise be considered true Gundam fans did not like it. And it's easy enough to see why. The show had a lighter tone. And while it certainly did get serious at times, it was never really on the same level as the others. I mean, it definitely could be way worse. It could be the polar opposite of G Gundam with preschoolish tones and absolutely no plot whatsoever. <laughs> now there's a scary thought. Anyway, the show easily stands on its own as its own separate thing. If you think it as a normal Gundam anime, you'll probably never be able to properly enjoy it. I mean, granted, there are a few issues that I have to nitpick at myself with my fairly limited knowledge of Gundam, but they're relatively minor things. I guess it's not too unlike my opinion when people think those who give something a bad publicity are in a majority. Those who draw the most negative attention to themselves are often the most noticed. 
and it's also often not entirely their own fault, especially when they're breaking societal norms. The story is surprisingly well written, hardly would call it the best, but it's still better than most people would give it credit for. The animation, on the other hand, while it was still a fledgling medium for fooling cartoon series, and I have to say, the way some of these mouths move, I just can't help but be reminded of Mike the TV from Reboot. Free for only 99 <laughs> Though that said, the show has more in common with its predecessor, Cubix, and some of the various Transformers cartoons and anime that came before and after it. All of the mobile suits, mobile armors, and other mecha in the Gundam series are simply referred to as robots in SD Gundam Force. The show is sort of a mix between SD Gundam sub-sub series, Command Chronicles, a probably futuristic series featuring Command Gundam and Captain Gundam, Mosha Gundam, a feudal Japan-style series with samurai-style mobile suits starring the titler Musha Gundam, and Night Gundam, which is basically a blatant knockoff of Dragon Quest, because, you know, that's more popular in Final Fantasy in Japan, apparently, which features several memorable characters from the main Universal Century timeline as knights, mages, rangers, sages, etc., and it stars the titler Night Gundam, who is basically the original mobile suit as a knight. Or is he? Well, I won't spoil anything. You should check it out for yourself. Also, Priest Gun Tink looks completely absurd. <laughs> Just look at that thing. All three of these sub-sub series are apparently set in the same universe, with Musha Gundam being set in the Land of Ark, and the main setting of Night Gundam being in Lokroa. Period of Fender Gundam Force, these series are represented in two different worlds. One is the world where Neotopia, a city, quote, unquote, near future, where Command Chronicles takes place in the far future, and the other is the world where Lycroa and Arkar, which had been taken over by the evil Dark Axis, who basically replaced Zeon in Superior Defender. Granted, there was an Axis Zeon, but I doubt it's anything close to being the same thing. The Dark Axis are more like the Die Shocker of Gundam, without really being a proper crossover group. Still probably does a better job of being a crossover villains than the villains in Turn A, unless you count the novel or an alternate or modified version of Psycho Gundam as the Black Doll counterpart to Turn A who is the White Doll, or Gundam A. Skewlapis, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, in the manga, and even then it's only one villain each. Then again, SD Gundam Force does a better job of being a crossover in general than Turn A does. Though, for what it's worth, the three main SD Gundam sub-sub series are the only time separate sub-series in the Gundam franchise were in the same universe to begin with, unlike Turn A, which just welded the established canons together to make a completely different canon. The Neotopian robots and the Dark Axis robots, including Captain Gundam, were all based on the Universal Sentry mecha. Captain Gundam in particular is based on Gundam Zephyranthi, as I think it's pronounced from Stardust Memory. Arts robots are readily oddly based on G Gundam Mecha, crossed with Musha Gundam Mecha. The lead Gundam from Ark being Baku Netsumaru, who in spite of wielding swords is based on the Shining Gundam. And somewhat ironically, Captain Gundam's signature move actually resembles the Shining Finger instead of Bakunetsumaru's. The Crow's robots are similarly all based on the Gundam Wing mecha crossed with Knight Gundam mecha, with the lead robot Zero the Wing Knight being based on, as the name implies, Wing Gundam. No, he does not attempt to suicide all the time. Also, his cape is a booster, at least that's how he claims he's always floating around. I still think he's using magic, because that's apparently a thing he can do. 
because, you know, robots using magic totally makes sense. Also, because when he was stuck in a place where he couldn't use his magic, he was unable to fly, even though Captain was able to use his boosters. Although it does seem like the cape is indeed his booster, but randomly vanished in that place. So it's probably a magic booster or something. Only Zero is the only Night Gundam in the series who is not directly named after the mobile suit he's based on. Oh, and his voice actor? She does not do a very convincing male voice for Zero. I personally blame the fact that he's way too effeminate to begin with. Plus, it's not nearly as bad as Naoto's English voice actor in Persona 4, but that's mostly because... Oh wait, that's a spoiler, never mind. With a bit of pitch shifting, I was easily able to get his voice imitated too. The dark... Uh, what about Gundam X? Uh, what do you mean, what about Gundam X? What the heck is Gundam X? Next thing I know, you're going to tell me that SD Gundam started off as a variety show, which also isn't represented in SD Gundam Force. Ha 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 ha. How absurd that would be. Oh, uh, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absurd. Uh, I was just messing with you. <laughs> uh, yeah. There were other alternate timeline Gundam series which were also not properly represented, though, as well as a couple of SD Gundam spin-off uh, tactics RPG-style video games. Now, the Dark Axis is initially led by Zapper Zaku, Grappler Goof, and Destroyer Jump, who would get along rather well with Command Gundam, considering the amount of weapons he has. Dark Axis cannon fodder, called Zaku, uh, and even one based on Char Zaku, Zako Red. Zako Red? Is this some kind of super sentai? Zako Red! Golf blue, boy! Storm purple! Akai brown! Zako green! That's a sentai! Zero Char! Anyway, there's also the human sidekick shoot, that's S H U T E. Gunbike, who is Captain's mentor in this series, effectively meaning that he replaces Command Gundam. Seiwa shoots love interest, I think, the artistic Mayor Margaret Gathermoon chief, Haro, who wears a Haro mask. Piro, the mayor's assistant, shoots Mother Kiko and Father Mark, who may or may not be Chief Haro, as well as the prodigy mechanic Bellwood, eccentric Kung Fu scientist Cal Lin, who has his own little custom ball. Uh, various GMs of the Gundam Forest and citizens around Neotopia, uh, the villain cannon fodder that we already mentioned before, Zako soldiers, and the mysterious commander of the Dark Axis and about 50 other characters in Mass.